Hi YouTube! It is Elizabeth back again. I uh, wanted to make kind of a part two to my 10 things your labor nurse wishes that you knew. And this is going to be 10 things that your postpartum nurse wishes that you knew. And I have been a labor and delivery and postpartum nurse for the past six years. So I think I have some room to speak on this. Obviously there are people with way more experience than me. Um, but I've been doing this for a little while and so these are some things that your postpartum nurse wishes that you knew. Um, definitely if you have anything to add or any comments about your postpartum period, leave them down below in the comments and just keep watching if you want to know. I'm going to kind of start at delivery and work out from there. The very first thing that your postpartum nurse wants you to know and just something that you should know about your postpartum body is that it's not like movies and TV where people give birth and all of a sudden they're super skinny again. You are still going to look about six months pregnant after you deliver and that is due to your uterus still being quite large. So right after delivery it's about three pounds and it has to go down to three ounces and so your uterus is going to be large and in charge and make you look about six months pregnant. And I always say that if Kate Middleton looked pregnant right after she delivered, then the rest of us really didn't stand a chance. Going off of that, so your uterus, also known as your fundus, um, gets some nice gentle massaging directly. After delivery, your doctors and your nurses are going to be checking uh, your fundus, giving it a massage as we like to uh, call it, which might be the biggest misnomer in the history of the world. Um, they're going to be rubbing on the top of your uterus and making sure that that muscle is nice and contracted. It should feel firm like a grapefruit and that it is midline and below your belly button. And unfortunately, this is not the most comfortable thing in the world, especially after you've gone through all the pains of childbirth, but it is necessary to make sure that your bleeding is okay and to make sure that your bleeding stays okay. After you deliver, you are going to bleed like a heavy period. It's going to kind of feel like a lot of bleeding because you haven't bled probably for nine months unless there were some other issues going on in your pregnancy. So that bleeding is going to feel like a lot and certainly let your nurse know if you think that it's too much. But we define too much bleeding as soaking more than a pad an hour and this is like the big um, granny panty pads and or having a blood clot the size of a golf ball or larger and you will bleed with a vaginal delivery and with a c-section um, across the board there's just going to be bleeding as that uterine muscle clamps down it's more for a vaginal delivery than a c-section i am going to make a video specifically dedicated to c-sections but i'm just doing a little bit more research on that one just to make sure that the things that are done at the hospitals that i have worked at are also done um kind of universally in the United States. Um, so we do not know how many stitches you got in your bottom. Hands down. We just don't know. Um, the doctor doesn't count number of stitches. It's a running stitch. What we look at more is the degree of the tear. So there are different degrees. You can have a skid mark, which you might not need a repair for, or a first degree, which is kind of pretty superficial. And all the way down to a fourth degree, which is when the tear goes through the uh, rectal sphincter muscle um, and so that's more what we look at as far as as tearing you also can tear you know on a labia or anterior urethra but we don't know how many stitches that's not how we classify tears or how severe a tear is. going off of that um, kind of sensitive area of your bottom after you deliver peeing is very 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 important um, because your uterus and your bladder are best friends in your body, uh, if your bladder gets over full, it will displace your uterus and your uterus will actually start to rise and it'll shift over to the right hand side typically. And be because it's displaced, it can't clamp down the way that it needs to and your bleeding can increase. So that is why we really encourage you to pee after delivery as, as soon as you are able to with the epidural wearing off and everything. Now that being said, with the epidural, um, the last piece of communication that comes back is your brain to your bladder. So sometimes you are unable to pee. Um, or let's say you have a, a natural delivery but just have a lot of swelling or you tore up in that general direction. Things like that can impede the flow of urine after delivery. And your nurse might have to, um, after she's tried all of her, her tips and tricks to try and get you to pee and they're not working, might have to do a in and out catheterization. That 
often will reset things and then you're able to pee again. And then, you know, sometimes you do need a catheter for a small period of time just to make sure that your bladder is continued to be emptied. Um, but yeah, peeing is really, really important. Now that being said, after you go to the bathroom, um, that after bottom care is gonna be really, really, really important. So they're gonna give you a squirt bottle, feel free to use that while you're urinating, and definitely afterwards, you're gonna pat dry very gently, you don't wanna do a lot of rubbing, even if you don't have any stitches. And then you're gonna wanna get all of the goods. So you're gonna wanna get the witch hazel pads that are nice and cooling, you're gonna wanna get the numbing spray, um, you're gonna wanna get ice in the first 24 hours and then a sits bath after that. After bottom care is key and continue to do that when you get home. It's gonna help you feel more like yourself. It's gonna help bring healing cells where they need to be um, by using that heat of that sits bath after the first 24 hours. It's going to just soothe you and make you feel more human because right after you deliver um, with a vaginal delivery or if you've pushed for a while and ended up with a C-section, your bottom is going to feel like it's going to fall out of itself and it's not but all of those aftercare things are going to be really really important and just be kind to your bottom like it has been through a lot a baby came through it and it will go back to normal okay vaginas are truly amazing things but really doing the aftercare making sure that you're asking for ice getting um ibuprofen and will help with that swelling too is going to be a really important part of taking care of you this one is a biggie, like the biggest biggie ever. Do not get up by yourself. Don't do it. Please don't do it, please don't do it. So you've just delivered, you're feeling great. Let's say you didn't, you didn't even have an epidural, so your legs aren't numb, but you've had a giant shift in fluid. Uh, you've had blood loss, you've had a baby, you're running on adrenaline and you might stand up and faint and we do not want you to fall after you've had a baby for a multitude of reasons we don't want you to get hurt we don't want you to be holding your baby and fall so the very first time you get up after delivery your nurse will always get up with you even if your husband is there please do not get up with him um it's really it's a liability for us as well as for you and i'm gonna be frank with you if you fall it's a lot of paperwork for yours truly um and I'm, I mean, I, that is true, but that's not why solely I don't want you to fall. I don't want you to fall and get hurt. So you might think that your legs are working great after that epidural, but one is still weaker. We're gonna test all that out. We're gonna have a wheelchair on standby just to make sure that you don't fall because falling is bad. And please do not get up by yourself. If you do not take anything else away from this video, that should be your number one is please do not get up by yourself. And even if you've been cleared to get up by your nurse, if you get up and you're feeling dizzy, faint, lightheaded, your legs feel weak, sit back down and call out for your nurse. Whilst we're down in that bottom area, let's talk about poop. So in my first video, I said, you probably will poop, you very well may, may poop while you deliver and we don't care. You are probably not gonna poop for a few days after you have the baby. And that's because one, you've cleared yourself out before delivery, two, you poop during delivery, and three, your bottom sore and you're kind of afraid. So pooping is important and pooping is scary. Your first poop is not going to be comfortable, but it's not going to be the worst thing in the world. Make sure that you are popping those stool softeners like candy. Um, they should be offering them to you a couple times a day, and if not, you might just need to ask for them. They might be um, PRN, which means um, as needed, so just ask for the stool softener. You wanna make sure you're drinking lots and lots of water, that you're getting up and walking the halls. Those are all things that are going to encourage your stool to be nice and soft, and encourage peristalsis to get that poop headed in the right direction. Um, and then when you do need to go to the bathroom, don't sit on the toilet and strain. Wait until it is there and then release it into the world, into the toilet, if you will, um, and just wait for it. If you get to the point where you are really feeling super constipated and uncomfortable, but you can't go, that's when you might want to talk with your doctor about something more intense, such as a laxative or a suppository. But until then, just wait for the poop to come to you. So another OB secret is called an OB cocktail, which unfortunately does not include tequila, although I guess you could add some, but um, it is apple juice, orange juice, and prune juice warmed up. It tastes like hot, hot apple cider and it is absolutely delicious. 
This one is a biggie too because I think in our culture we really struggle with asking for help and relying on other people but ask your friends and family for help and accept help when it is offered to you. Um, let people bring you meals, let people clean your house. If they ask what can I do, I know it is very normal in the American culture to be like oh no I'm fine, I'm good but thank you so much for offering. But if somebody's offering, accept their help because the postpartum period is it's a difficult transition for anybody. And so just accepting help and saying, yes, I would love your help is such a good thing. But on the other side of that, while it's great to accept help, it's also okay um, after you have your baby to not have people come visit you in the hospital. And it is okay to ask your visitors to leave. And it is okay if you want your nurse to ask your visitors to leave. A lot of hospitals nowadays don't really have visiting hours, which is nice because then people can kind of come and go as they please. But at the same time, you're gonna be recovering from having a baby, possibly breastfeeding your baby, needing to rest and sleep for sure. So great Aunt Bertha who wants to be there for three hours can totally get kicked out. And something that I do with my patients if um, they're seeming anxious about having people and wanting to kick them out as I say, you know, ask me for a Dr. Pepper if you want me to kick people out because we don't have Dr. Pepper. So that can be our code and then I can bring the smack down because I look nice but this face can get real mean if it needs to. <clears throat> Not really, but I mean I can nicely ask people to leave for you if we need. It's kind of a biggie and it's probably one that I'm going to talk about more. Um, Postpartum blues, being weepy after you have your baby is really, really normal. Um, what's not normal is feeling like you have lost joy and that you don't find pleasure in the things that you just find pleasure in, that you don't feel like you're bonding with your baby. That is not normal. Um, and obviously having thoughts of hurting yourself or your baby is totally not not something that we want. And it's a scary feeling and something that you should definitely seek help for. Um, Postpartum depression is no joke and unfortunately right now how our medical system is is we typically see postpartum depression crop up at about two weeks postpartum. So you're discharged from the hospital, you have a six week follow up appointment. Smack dab in the middle of that is when postpartum depression tends to rear its ugly head and a lot of times your pediatrician might have you fill out some postpartum depression scale uh, to, to kind of see where you are but it kind of comes back to, to you and to your family and your support system to, to recognize if there's something going on which is difficult. So I think just remembering like if you are not feeling like you're bonding with your baby, if, if you are not feeling um, happy in the things that used to bring you happiness and those are big red flags and often your partner is going to be the first person who notices a lot of these signs and symptoms of postpartum depression and you might not really even recognize them in yourself it might seem normal to you um, as somebody who has suffered from postpartum depression like it's intense and it's it's real and it's scary and and asking for help calling your OB and and getting somebody to talk to and perhaps getting on some medication can be really really important and can can potentially save your life um, so postpartum depression is no joke and it's just something really important that needs to be discussed more and I think it is being destigmatized a lot more than it was but I definitely think it can be destigmatized even more so so Last one that I want to talk about, um, number 10 for us, is about um, breastfeeding. So, obviously on this channel I have talked extensively about breastfeeding my first child. I now actually have a, a five-month-old as well um, who I am exclusively pumping for, and that is a whole nother story all up in itself. Um, but I think I can come to you from a slightly better place of knowledge and experience saying that breastfeeding is hard. It is hard and it is challenging and it is taxing and it is so rewarding. And if you even think you might want to breastfeed, definitely doing it in the hospital is a great place to start. Even if that's the only place you do it, your baby just gets some colostrum in the beginning and you switch to formula, that is totally fine and that is your choice. Honestly, as a, as a labor and delivery and postpartum nurse, I really truly believe feed your baby first and foremost. 
if breastfeeding is your goal. I mean, breastfeeding is the biological norm. And I don't mean that to be insulting to people that have two people that do not breastfeed. We were designed to breastfeed our babies. It is the biological norm. We are very lucky that science has come so far to give us something in the case when people are unable or not wanting to breastfeed their child. Formula saved so many babies. Um, but if you want to breastfeed and if it's in your heart to breastfeed, it is a labor of love and it is very rewarding and the hospital is a great place to get started and ask for help. Number one, first and foremost, if you're having trouble latching, if you're having pain, anything like that, hopefully there's a lactation consultant on staff, but if not, ask your postpartum nurses for help. Go seek a lactation consultant out in the community. The Leche League can be really helpful too. So those are all of my tips for um, you in your postpartum period. Um, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe and give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye.